What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Final Boss Garage. Uh, we are back in the garage. Today's goal um, is to do a couple things. We need to figure out what our piston and valve clearance is. Now, if you have a motor where, uh, say, you pick up a short block or you need to pick up a set of heads off Craigslist or you get a cam and you don't know the specs or you know, just anytime really you're installing a new cam or a new set of heads and you're not too sure how much clearance you have, uh, you should always do a piston or valve clearance. Now today we are going to be using Play-Doh. Um, it's super cheap. Uh, this is actually a knockoff Play-Doh, but you can go to Walmart, you can pick up any uh, little tub of Play-Doh for like 96 cents. Uh, so it's super cheap. Uh, so today we'll be using that. We'll go over how to do it and then our Next objective will be to um, Do all of our ARP head studs. We'll get those all put in and then we can lay down our head gaskets We're gonna install our lifters and then hopefully we can get to torquing down the heads today because that would be awesome uh, that can, Then I can finally start to button everything back up um, with the front of the motor um, I did go to the dealership today and pick up a new cam retaining plate. $47. Oh my god. I uh, totally feel like I got jipped off, but online um, I found them for much cheaper, but I read all the reviews and you could see uh, the little orange o-ring gasket that's on them. Uh, the quality wasn't all there, so just because it is such an important piece, uh, I decided, you know, just to pay the extra you know, 25 bucks and get quality uh, GM performance. Uh, it seems to be a theme for the whole motor on this because everything I've been using is GM performance. So uh, that is today's goal. We're gonna get that all set up. Uh, right now I'm just finishing up cleaning the other cylinder head, but I'm not gonna bring you along with that because we've already gone over it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install all 16 of our lifters. Um, I do have them in a Ziploc bag. They've been soaking in some motor oil um, it's really up in the air whether or not this is necessary um, but just know if you're trying to soak your lifters in oil and you're truly trying to get all the air out of your lifter to where they're completely full of oil uh, you do need to be able to pump them so uh, you put them in something like this like a ziploc bag and then you know grab like a push rod and push uh, on the bottom and then just kind of compress them a couple times and that'll force all the air out uh, so we do need to have the lifter pretty uh, pretty full of oil. Um, we don't really want it compressing too easily when doing our piston and valve clearance uh, just because uh, if it compresses too much then you're not really getting an accurate reading. So um, I've had them in oil. Uh, they're all pumped up. Uh, they're super hard. Uh, so hopefully uh, we're gonna get a good accurate reading. All right guys, uh, so I'm about to load my lifters into my lifter trays and install them into the car. Now, I did upgrade to LS2 lifter trays because everybody said it was recommended. I don't know why, so this is just a little comparison between the two. Now, uh, this is both of them facing the same direction. Uh, if you notice, uh, this part protrudes down a little more. Well, they're the same length, but um, this one's higher up, so I'm not too sure the purpose of that. And then if you look in them uh, from the top direction, um, I don't know. It looks the same. I don't. I don't understand the science behind it. Um, whatever. I'm not complaining. If anybody's interested in the part number, it's one two five nine five three six five. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, load the lifters into the trays, and then we're gonna slide these bad boys in. So we're gonna go ahead and install our LS2 lifter trays. Um, not too sure which way it goes, but. Uh, you can tell it's indented here in the middle um, on this one side so I'm going to put that side facing up uh, just because the bolt hole does indent down so it seems like that would be um, the choice. Now to install these you're going to install the lifters onto your lifter tray first and then you're going to slide them in. To do that you just grab your lifter. There is a flat side on each side of the lifter. You're going to install the flat side. Now, I don't know if you can tell, 
by looking at it, but the tops and the bottoms are flat. You're going to do the flat side of the lifters along with those. It's the only way to slide it in. And then there is oil holes here. These are non-directional, so it doesn't matter which side they go on because it's only on one. Uh, so that was one of my concerns, but everybody said don't worry about it. Just install them flat side up and down, and you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and put all four lifters on, and then we're just going to slide it on in. Now by aligning all the flat sides perfectly, the purpose of that is to get all the rollers uh, parallel with each other. Uh, so once those are on, uh, we're just going to go ahead and slide them down into our lifter bores. So just like that, took a little bit of pressure, um, but we did manage to get it in there. Uh, hopefully you can see with the light, I know it's not the best. Um, but you just slide it in there, and then we're going to take the tray, and we're just going to tighten that all down. So that's both lifters, uh, all four lifter trays installed. We're just going to tighten down the bolts and then uh, it's time to move on our head studs. We're going to go over the contents of our ARP head studs. Uh, this is part number 234-4110. In the stud you've got washers. smaller nuts, bigger washers, and you have your assembly lubricant. Uh, now uh, these were for a, another project that we had, um, so they've already been pre-lubed because uh, they were already installed at one point, but we decided to go with them on this one. So uh, you are going to have two different sides of bolts, if you remember the top bolts on the top by the intake manifold are thinner uh, so you're going to have your thicker ones and then uh, you do have your thicker bolts but if you remember the center bolts the center row the outside bolts were shorter so that's what those are um, so and then these are going to be the ones for your intake manifold area instructions say to thread these into the block hand tight and then we're going to torque the nuts on down before you install these, you should clean out your um, should clean out your threads inside the block and make sure everything's clean. Uh, I've decreased mine, uh, ran thread cleaner through it, and I've also vacuumed them. So we're just gonna go ahead. We're gonna start threading all these into our block, and then we can slide our head on, and we'll check our piston and valve clearance. If you're unsure which way to put in your head studs, uh, the threads that have the smaller gap between them are going to go up and the threads with the bigger gap are going to go down. Uh, another obvious way to tell is one end has an Allen wrench hole and the other end doesn't. Allen wrench hole always goes up. The ARP studs do come with their own uh, lube. Uh, when you get it, you just rub it on the threads. Rub it all the way all over all of them. This is recommended instead of using like a motor oil. So they'll have a couple threads started. Now you can go ahead and grab your Allen wrench. These can be done with Allen wrenches. Um, I don't really feel like fighting with Allen wrenches, so I'm going to grab a socket. Um, these are only supposed to be put down hand tight, so I'm going to uh, be grabbing it up here by the base and not using a lot of force on it. 
your bigger studs are going to be a 3 16 and then your smaller studs are going to be a 1 8. You're going to go around and you're going to tighten all of them down and just know that they should all, when you're done, they should all be the same height. So if you have one that's standing up uh, taller than the others, then there might be something wrong. Uh, hopefully you didn't cross thread it. Uh, threads might just be dirty or they just might need a little more loop. So we're going to go ahead and tighten all these down all the way around. And then we'll start with the next side. All right, now we are about to install our six liter uh, had gaskets. These are GM Performance. Uh, these are part number 12589227. Uh, I don't think there's a top and bottom. There's just a front and back. So just make sure it says front and it's pointed towards the front. And then uh, you can't get these upside down because lifter trays go up top, cylinder heads go on bottom. So we're just going to slide these over our head studs. And then uh, these will slide all the way down. Okay. All right, just like that. They are all the way on. Alright, so I'm just taking some Play-Doh, uh, I'm going to stick it to the piston. Now, I'm just going to stick it on there like that. I'm going to cover the whole area, make sure there's no like really thin spots. We don't want to get pinched in our head gasket. We're going to put it down just like that. Um, it's about a quarter inch thick. And now we're going to slide our cylinder head on the head studs. Now when you're doing this, you want to be very careful not to scratch the bottom of your heads. Since we're only checking this one, I'm just going to tighten everything around this cylinder. So I'm really just going to do these uh, maybe six bolts. I'm only tightening it enough to compress the head gasket. And then we're going to turn it over. All right, we're going to slide in our push rods. These are factory 7.4 push rods. Uh, I have a feeling these aren't going to work. And we're going to have to buy some new ones. But we'll get to that later. Now I'm tightening these by hand. 
and I'm not torquing them to the exact spec, but I know what 20 foot-pounds feels like. So I'm just going to do that by hand. We're now going to crank our engine over a couple rotations. your rocker arm to move. All right, that was the intake compressing opening. Here's the exhaust. It's open and compressed. Just do it one more time. Now we're going to take our cylinder head off. We're going to go ahead and pull our head off now. to pull straight up, try not to scratch the bottom. Now we have our Play-Doh from inside our cylinder. Um, you can't really tell too well on the camera, I know, uh, but you can see your perfect line intentions from the valves after a full rotation. Now, if you can see that the thickness uh, is still about a quarter inch, the valves ver barely touched it. I was expecting uh, them to cut in much more. Originally, the plan was for them to cut in and then we would chop this in half and then you would, after you chop it in half, you would measure your thickness right in the middle of where the valve meets. Uh, but since it barely touched it, um, I'm not, I'm going to do my head studs on the other side and then we're going to slap our cylinder heads back on and then we're going to torque them all down. going to torque on our cylinder head. With the ARP head studs, you do it in three sequences. You're going to do it in a star pattern. First sequence, you're going to torque all of them to 25 foot-pounds. Second pass, you're going to do it to 50 foot-pounds. And third pass, you're going to do it to 75 foot-pounds. First, I have to lube up all my threads, washers and nuts, and then we'll get to torquing. You want to make sure you don't forget to lube every nut as you install it. I like to use an extension to help me get it, the thread started uh, just because I have really shaky hands so I struggle with putting everything on by hand. You just put a little bit of lube right in the thread hole, right in the center and as you thread it on down it'll cover, it'll cover the base, it'll cover the washer. So. It'll be good to go. Alright, so I've hand tightened all of the nuts so far. I got my torque wrench set to 25 foot pounds. If you guys don't have a torque wrench um, and you're going to buy one, I don't recommend going to Harbor Freight. Uh, I know their variances of accuracy aren't the best. Uh, I picked this one up from Sears. It's Craftsman. Uh, still not the best, but um, it's only like two to three degrees of variance off. Uh, so. I'm pretty happy with those statistics, so that's what I'm going to use. This was cheap, it was only like 50 bucks. Um, it's max is 75 foot pounds, so it's perfect for our job today. You're going to start in the center, and then you're just going to torque. We just had our first click, now we're going to go to the next bolt. Alright, boom, that's our second click. We're going to go to the next ball. Oh, whoops. Boom. We just cranked it up to 50 foot pounds and we're going to do our second pass.
Oh, you know what? I think I skipped one. Now we're going to crank it to 75 and do our final pass, and then we'll torque the top row of the smaller uh, 1 8 studs. Our final pass is 75 foot pounds. Take some muscle. torque down now we're just going to do the top row uh, I believe these go to 18 foot-pounds all right so check the ARP uh, install guide these top ones are 22 foot-pounds you're gonna start with the middle one jump to the right one jump to the one to the left of the middle one jump to the outside one jump to the other outside one uh, you can do it all in one pass or you could split it up in two if you'd like I've already tightened them down hand tight so I'm just gonna do one pass Butts, head, nuts are all installed on the head studs. Now we're going to go ahead and slide in all 10 of our push rods. I already have two installed in cylinder two, and we're just going to slide the rest in. There's no proper up and down for these, uh, you just put them in. Some people like to soak these in oil too. Or uh, pour a little bit of oil down each one before startup. I'll do that after I got my rocker arms on. Now we're going to put our rocker arms back on and then we're going to torque those to 22 foot pounds. Make sure your rocker arms nice and center as you're tightening it down. I'm going to torque all these down to 22 foot-pounds. I'm going to start from the center and work my way out. And after all are torqued to 22 foot-pounds, I'm going to rotate the motor over uh, about one rotation, and then I'm going to go through it again. Now, it's now we're going to torque all these to 22 foot-pounds, and then we're going to rotate the motor over just a little bit. We want to make sure that both the intake and exhaust valves are closed while torquing them. Uh, so we'll start all of them with 22 foot-pounds, rotate a little bit, and then just go over them again. Just because some of these are on the uh, compression stroke or the exhaust stroke. Now we're going to crank the motor over a couple rotations. That was loud. Alright, now we're gonna 
retorque them. one more rotation all right guys that's going to conclude today's video for our ARP head stud install and our cylinder head install um, hopefully uh, you guys kind of learned something or if you guys had questions you now have a general idea on how it's going to work um, next video uh, will probably just be me buttoning everything back up and then uh, hopefully going for a first start I'm not going to film the other side installed uh, as of right now it's just the one uh, but cylinder heads all installed everything's good to go you're ready to put on your valve covers if you guys have any requests or you guys want me to make any videos please let me know um, as always like the video comment subscribe and uh, keep on wrenching i'm going to see you guys next week